livestock industry has always been one of the pillars upon which the agriculture sector stands. Join host Conrad O'Brien Tuesdays at 9.30 a.m. on News Talk 93 FM for Talking Livestock. Brought to you by the Jamaica Dairy Development Board, an agency of the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries, transforming the dairy industry. Indeed, welcome. Welcome back to the program Straight Up right here at News Talk 93 FM. It's 9.34 on the clock. And indeed, we want to just welcome you to our regular Tuesday feature here, Talking Livestock. It's brought to you by the Jamaica Deer Development Board, an agency of the Ministry of Agriculture and Fishery. This morning, our guest is the man himself, the Minister of Agriculture, and indeed, the Member of Parliament for South, South East Clarendon, Mr. Pernell Charles Jr. Hi, Minister Charles. How are you doing, man? Morning, my friend. Morning, man. How are you? Morning, welcome. I'm still looking for you, you know. You know, come check me. <laughs> Listen, you guys have to understand, the minister and I have a love affair in this regard, you know. He's my MP. <laughs> cool, 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 cool. All right. How are you doing? I'm very good, man. Give me time. Good, good. All right, minister, welcome to the feature here. Of course, um, we see you're doing the rounds. Um, seems to be a very, very, uh, shaping up to be a very hardworking minister in the Ministry of Agriculture, brother. Well, we have no choice. This, mm -hmm. this is the time for agriculture to shine. Um, this is the time when we have globally a lot of concerns regarding food security. Um, and this is the time when Jamaica can now uh, really reveal itself as you know, a strong player in the region and make the best use of, of the challenges, turning them into opportunities. So this is our time to really push in terms of productivity, in terms of innovation, and, and we need to communicate using LTP and other portals to get everybody to be encouraged to be involved. In, in so the, in the, in your, the, in voice, in your voice is important. Thanks a lot, Minister. Indeed. And, you know, I must say that I reckon that you have some agencies there that working with you. Of course, the Jamaica Deer Development Board, you know, um, through its yes. chairman, um, that seems to be doing a good job. Um, Dr. Deslan is, and of course, uh, Mr. Sears Devon, who is really heading up the agency here and so on. So you have a good, strong of P team around you because, of course, as the saying goes, it's teamwork that makes the dream work, eh? That is correct. That's correct. And, you know, teamwork is critical. Coordination of the team is even more critical. And I think that's what we're getting. Devon Sears has done an excellent job um, and, and the board also. So we are working to really transition now and expand and create massive opportunity, not just in terms of dairy, but also across the board in terms of livestock. Indeed, indeed. And hence we'll get into some direct question, Minister. But before I go there, Minister, you have now been, you know, occupy the chair at various ministries. Have you identified yes. the one that is that you're most comfortable with? You seem to be really in your skin in this one, in agriculture. I would say agriculture, particularly because it allows me the opportunity to utilize the skill set from all ministries, national security, gives you an understanding about period alerts me and protecting the products and those issues you can back it. Foreign affairs and foreign trade gives me the opportunity to strengthen international and regional partnerships to the benefit of our country. Uh, when I was in economic growth, I focused on water, I focused on housing and infrastructure at first. Um, and you, you know the clear connection between the sustainability aspect of those. And then where, I, where I'm coming from now, which is uh, Murek. So yeah. housing, urban renewal, environment, and climate change. There's a direct connection between climate action and climate smart agriculture. So I think agriculture is really the culmination of all of my experiences, and I'm really looking forward to transforming the sector. Yes, yes. And that, 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 is so, that, that is so good. That is so good, Minister. So certainly, just based on what you said out just now, you know, it really, you're, you're really prepared nicely to use all of those skill set to build out the agriculture portfolio and agriculture ministry here in Jamaica so we can basically strengthen our food um, security minister. 
that's it. I mean, and the time is now. Mm -hmm. Now is the time for us to reduce our import bill. Now is the time for us to push in terms of ensuring food security, particularly in time of crisis. Um, and now is the time for us to focus on producing healthy, nutritious food so that we can have a healthy and productive country. Um, Go all of those things are going to inure to our national benefit. We see double-digit growth in our agriculture sector which can impact nationally in terms of also double-digit growth. Uh, 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 abs growth. Absolutely, and it must not be lost on us, Minister. I, I think in 1997, uh, uh, no, it was 2007, we record, I think, a 3.4% growth. And I think that's when agriculture played a major role in that. And if you look back at the history, Minister, whenever we grow, agriculture always responsible for a chunk of that growth. That's correct. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're a small country utilizing our natural assets. And if you listen to, for instance, the president of Rwanda, mm -hmm. um, and if you do an analysis across the world, you see that countries that are trying to, to move themselves towards prosperity, the agricultural sector is the sector that presents the greatest opportunity for sustainable growth if it is developed correctly. Uh, so it requires a focus on research, it requires a focus on protecting the farmer's investment in terms of pre and other variables, and it requires us to really uh, create a more efficient mechanism to drive production. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. even what we're talking about today in terms of the Jamaica Dairy Development Board and that transition now yes. over to the National Livestock Board, all of that is the evolution of agriculture. It is the, 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 the improvement of efficiency. It is the expanding of our reach and our horizons with the goal now of really having a stronger, more resilient agricultural and fishery sector. Exactly, Minister. And I have about five questions, direct questions as it relates to this present topic, transition sure. of the Jamaica Dairy Development Board to a national livestock board. So all things livestock will now be um, under the auspices of the Jamaica Dairy Development Board. That's where you're heading, right? Exactly. So, so we're moving now from a focus only on dairy farmers to include the beef cattle and the small ruminant farmers. And the, the focus now for that wider net will be on rehabilitating the pastures, um, conserving fodders, and provision of loans and establishment of fodder banks. Um, you, you're going to see us now stretching out in terms of agricultural education. And we have an AEI, which is an agricultural education institution. Um, and that's going to focus on restarting the dairy programs in the schools that used to do it, and also having some new uh, entrance into, mm -hmm. into those programs. We're also going to see, as I said before, research and development is critical, the National Livestock Genetics Program. That's an initiative that is important in terms of improving our breeding. And so we have been providing and we continue to provide semen and embryos to farmers so that they can have access to the highest quality. What, our goal is to have optimum, improved efficiency. So when we are breeding cattle, um, when, we are, when we are looking towards dairy farming, we are optimizing our output. Better results, better revenue, more sustainability, more money in the pockets of our farmers, more money to reinvest in our sector, and ultimately uh, improvement for the entire country. Good. So that's, that, that's certainly the critical role that the Jamaica yes. Dairy Development Board is marked into and will be played. So conceptually, Minister, what has driven the government to the transition, to, to, to the transition, to transition the Jamaica, the Jamaica um, through the, the Dairy Development Board to a national, a national right, lifestyle yeah. board? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, as, as, as we said, I mean, as, as we evolve in terms of the concepts around agriculture, there's mm -hmm. a need for us to broaden the value chain to include the beef cattle, to include the small ruminants. Um, and right now we are importing, right now we are importing more than 80% of our uh, beef cattle and, and ruminants. 
So the, there's enormous opportunity in Jamaica in terms of import substitution and enormous opportunities to grow that sector and that portion of the sector. Um, and that is why we have to have a specific and deliberate approach to widening our, our scope from just dairy to now envelop and embrace um, the, the wider structures of livestock. And so we have set up a multi-agency livestock development committee under the supervision of the board um, and we've created terms of reference for us to develop a livestock policy. And so the committee is also examining the other livestock board structures globally, um, looking to see what is best, what will work best in Jamaica, for example, meat and livestock in Australia, um, and the Indian State Board models, all of those models are being assessed mm -hmm. to see exactly what we think um, is going to help us here in Jamaica to have a successful um, expansion of our reach to the benefit of our farmers and to the benefit of our consumers. Good, good. So, so you could, you could, in order to get the best, you could be basically looking at um, best practice in various other countries and pull all of those exactly. together. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have to look on what has worked and we have to see how it would be adapted in our country. But Jamaica has its own unique idiosyncrasies. We have our own unique circumstances. And so uh, it's not a copy and paste, but it's more looking on to see uh, what is what is beneficial to us mm -hmm. um, and what we want to stay away from as well. Good, good. So, so therefore, Minister, if I were to put a question to you direct to say what will be the intent, what is the intended policy directive of the new entity in, con yes. in, in the context of livestock development and expansion in Jamaica, what would you say to us? Listen, I would say, let me give you a few things. One, to encourage development of a commercially oriented, efficient and internationally competitive livestock industry. We want to compete with the world. We want to feed ourselves first, feed CARICOM, and then feed the world. Two, I would say to support the emergence of a more diverse structure of production with a large increase in numbers, which we can achieve successfully um, for our livestock producers and enterprises. Three, to conserve the livestock resources and to use them more efficiently and to put in place policies and institutions for us to have the sustainable resource development and use. Um, also to, to collect access. I think it's going to get an opportunity for us to collect some money on each of the livestock imports, uh, which is going to help us to really now enhance local production. We're going to have to preserve our local breeds. Remember, we're talking about mm -hmm. genetics and improving there. And finally, um, I, I'm always going to go back to research and development. We have to put some money. We have to support research on livestock production and breed development. It is important for us to make sure that as we evolve, we continue to increase and improve our efficiency. And that can only be done by challenging ourselves and by making sure we're putting some money into research and development. Good, good. The, the, the new National um, Livestock Board Minister, what benefit will that provide for the livestock farmers across Jamaica? So the new structure of the board is going to provide much more access for livestock farmers to services, to grants, to loans, um, to direct information, and also to improve the technology. They're going to benefit from the improved genetics that will ultimately lead to greater productivity and profitability for themselves and their operations. Um, and we're going to be placing an emphasis on developing local and indigenous forms of animal feed. Remember now, the feed is one of the critical elements driving the cost up. And so if we can use our local material and develop our own feed, then we'll be able to reduce the reliance on imported options. Mm -hmm. um, the developmental sector is also critical in terms of the performance of the entire agricultural sector. And so we're looking on this sector, making a contribution to the wider sector and to the wider national development goals. Um, and really, once we have a stable industry, we're going to be able to maintain our drive towards food security. We are going to feed our people. Uh, and we're going to also be able to explore more avenues for our stakeholders to earn some money through exports. Remember I said to you, first thing first, feed Jamaica. Mm -hmm. Then after that, 
seed can come. Then after that, seed the world. Seed the world. Um, seed the, seed we, have a, we, have a, we have a role, we have a major role in terms of sustainable food systems. And that's from the ground up. Right? So, for example, manure is a critical source of natural fertilizer. Mm-hmm. And as we expand the livestock sector, um, you know, we... Excellent point, we Minister. Excellent several point. Several of those animals will help to boost productivity in regions where there's low mechanization and, and a lot of, of, of their waste can be used as organic fertilizer. It's mm. important assets. These are very important assets, particularly now for those vulnerable communities and for for many, the only sources of income generation will be these small ruminants. So we have to find a way to make sure we're creating sustainable systems. Um, ultimately, food security is the only important factor sustainability also and income generation are also critical if we're going to secure livelihoods. Great. We know, Minister, that basically to achieve this, there is um, some legislative work that needs to be done and so on. Where are you now and how soon is this legislative work is expected to be complete for the Dairy Development Board to morph into that all-encompass unit? As I said, you... You already heard me discuss the Livestock Development Committee, mm-hmm. which has been formulated. That committee has started the consultations, so consultations among the key stakeholders within the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries have commenced. Um, external stakeholders have also be, been engaged, um, and others will soon be engaged. Um, ultimately, the policy is a priority for the government, the priority for the Ministry. And so all efforts are going to be made to make sure that this legislation and the framework that we need to drive this becomes a reality in the shortest possible time. Great, 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 great. So so all so it so it's all system goes, Minister. Uh, from where, where, where you sit. You mentioned a number of things, Minister, in terms of building out the, the industry for food security and so on, you know, as it relates to the small ruminants and the livestock sector generally. Uh, do you have a kind of time frame, say, to say um, short term, long term, medium term, you know, Jamaica will be there? Where is the trajectory for this? Well, listen, right now, you know, mm-hmm. right now we are seeing increased investments. Yes. Um, so, right as we speak, we are seeing confidence from investors like True Juice Limited, like Surge Island, like Island Dairies mm-hmm. in the dairy sector. Yes. Which, which is a signal. It's a signal of the potential um, and the opportunities to be harnessed from the livestock and dairy industries. And, and so the shift to concentrate on livestock overall and not just dairy alone mm-hmm. comes from consultations with these groups. Yes. And it shows the, the, the full potential. So we are starting now. Um, in the medium and long term, you're going to see the, the, the legislative framework being developed. You're going to see the allocations being put, as I said, to the research and development improvement of our genetics driving education across the sector mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and really developing what has to be a strong and resilient sector Conrad. it has to it has to be that jamaica is not just doing this for a one or two years yes but we want to be seen as a leader in our region where we can feed our people and start to look towards people seeing jamaica as the place to import from we want to be exporters of our meat exporters of our milk um, and I, I think, not think, I know that we can achieve it. That it's just, it's just going to take coordination, effort, discipline, and determination. Good. And, and you know, I have journeyed to supermarkets, and I'm seeing where, where there, there are yogurts being produced from our goat milk here in Jamaica. So that's an industry yeah. that seems to be building out there. There are enormous opportunities for diversification. Um, several products that we can uh, expand to. Um, and most importantly, not just the products, remember the brand. You know, as somebody who has learned in intellectual property, um, anybody can get goat milk. 
Yes. But not everybody can get Jamaican vote. Absolutely. Yeah. Brand, um, brand Jamaica. There we go. Mm. There's something special about this, this country that we love. Um, the entire world wants a piece of Jamaica. Uh, it even needs to be, you know, connected to us by what they eat. So we have enormous opportunities to expand into markets that are salivating for us. As I said to you, we are importing 80% mm -hmm. right now. If we can get that down in terms of import substitution just by half, you're looking at millions of dollars being pumped into the pockets of Jamaican families. Several thousands of our Jamaicans in communities being able to go to school more comfortably, being able to go to university, mm -hmm. being able to become the scientists and the researchers that we need in 10 years to continue to evolve our sector. It is a sustainable cycle that we want. Education, production, conservation, continued research, continued expansion into markets, and ultimately a strong and resilient agricultural and fishery sector. Good. And a big part of a big part of your thrust minister is basically to get the the educational facility, and when I say educational facility, I'm talking about at the secondary school level to basically yeah. play a, a, a part, a role, a major role in this. We've spoken to the principal of the uh, Sydney Pagan STEM yeah. Academy last week and certain, or week before last, and certainly they are on a trajectory. I'm sure that's what you want to multiply across the schools in Jamaica, Minister. Exactly. Sydney Pagan is one of 10 schools that have been identified for us to start the agricultural education program. In terms of dairy, we have Case, we have NC, we have Dintil, we have Monroe, we have Beartech, we have New Forest, and many others who are going to be a part of that initial relaunching. Mm -hmm. um, my goal, I want to tell you, is to make sure that every single school and every child in Jamaica is connected to farming. My father tells me of a time where um, every boy and girl in his district in St. Anne would have to plant a tree, would have to milk a cow, would have to know about farming. Yes. Well... Hello, Minister? Oh, well... We lost Minister there, let's see. He was in a roller. We are coming to the close of the feature. It's... um. Talking Livestock here. It's aired here on Newstalk 93 FM Straight Up every Tuesday at 9 from 9.35 to 10 o'clock. And indeed, it is sponsored by the Jamaica Dairy Development Board. And this morning, we have the Minister of Agriculture and Fisheries, the Honorable Pernell Charles Jr. And, you know, this, wait, wait, wait. our minister is back up. All right, let's. Minister? Hello, Minister? Not, not here in the minister. Let's see. Let's see how we can fix that. All right. We just want to close off with minister. So, you know, he was talking about the importance of having our youngsters, our schools, you know, every single person in the household being exposed, you know, maybe by, um, as they would say, by a good kid for you. Or you just involved. You know how to, to be a part of the whole agriculture um, zeal or zest in Jamaica, uh, so everybody participate. All right, so let's see. Minister? Yes, I don't know. Yes, um, the technology, the vagaries of the technology, sir. Yeah, well, they can't, they can't stop us. Abs absolute, we're, absolute. We're connected, we're connected and we're getting the information out to the people. Abs absolute, 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 absolutely, absolutely, Minister. So that's 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 a good look there, Minister. Just my final question for you now, in terms of the the subsidies and the help, um, your ministry through the various agencies, you are open for dialogue with persons who are in the sector, and what should they do in order to get such assistance? Where should they begin? Well, I tell you first, let us contact the Jamaica Dairy Development Board um, because, you know, they are right now the repository of information that can help you um, depending on exactly what it is you want to know um, to, to guide you or to actually give you the support. Um, we need our farmers to be successful. Not want. We need it. Indeed. But Jamaica needs it. And so anything we can do to either support you directly 
or direct you to the direct support elsewhere. Uh, you know, this is our responsibility. Mm -hmm. This is what we are here to do. And as we transition into the national livestock formation now, um, we're going to expand beyond just the dairy farmers. And so I know that in that um, in that new dispensation, we're going to have a lot of questions. And so we will be utilizing formats like like the radio, the TV, and, and getting the information out there through public relations so that people are informed. Um, I know that when people are informed, then they're going to be able to make better decisions and to make sure that they start the operations the right way. Ex ex excellent, Minister. In 30 seconds, we have seen where a lot of production, productive land, you know, that was in cane and other crops and so on, have been, you know, some of them out um, over the last few, few years or so. Would, yeah. would we, could we see some of these lands being returned into pastures and so on for, you know, dairy? the dairy industry in its broadest those, sense? Those, not, not to worry. The, that idle land was waiting for me to come. <laughs> All right. It was just waiting for me to come so we could do the necessary zoning and structuring and soil mapping and defining of exactly what is best use of the land. Some of it will be used for livestock. Some will be used for crops. Um, that which is salinating won't be used in one way. So, so we're doing all of those assessments now to RADA and AIC and the ministry, and you're going to see productivity like you've never seen before. Thanks a lot, Minister. Always a pleasure, and we wish you well. So thanks for gracing us with your present here, and we, can't, we are very happy to partner with the Jamaica Dairy Development Board, an uh, agency of the Ministry of Agriculture, to bring this feature. Thanks, Minister. All the best. Thank you to you. All the best to you and all the best to your listeners. Thanks a lot, sir. All right, so that was Minister Pernell Charles Jr., the Minister of Agriculture and Fisheries, really talking about the dairy sector. And, of course, he would have given us a little synopsis here and there as to the broader agricultural portfolio. But this morning, we're zeroing on the, on the dairy sector. Of course, you would have heard that the Dairy Development Board is now being morphed into a full a national livestock board to basically